Today we're going to talk about hardware 3 and 4 and if you should wait or not this will be the discussion of today's video as well as a comparison of Tesla and Ford history. Now if you are new to my channel I have my own group where we can share experiences, share updates on eCar Review. It is in German and English. I would be very happy to have you there and you can share your experience of your Tesla. So we want EVs to succeed seat and if you buy a Tesla and you have one right now do come on eCar Review it's all free to use and you can share your experience of your Tesla or any other EV out there so let's make EVs successful and convince people out there to buy an EV based on your experience so check out the website I would be very happy to have you there now let's start with Ford and the Model T which is a very good example how Ford back then was able to reduce costs and reduce prices to make cars more affordable for the masses and that is pretty much the same that Tesla is doing right now. They are very good in reducing costs and they will also talk about the new platform very soon, have a platform that is even less expensive. And if we take the time frame here between 1909 and 1925, well, that is 16 years and we didn't even reach that level yet for Tesla. If we talk about the Model 3 and moving forward, but if we look back to the Model S and Model X in the old version, we have some quite some time already done now and we had a lot of cost reduction and we are still getting started. There is so much more to happen in the near future. So this is the reason why many people don't understand why Tesla can actually reduce costs, scale production like Ford did in the past and move forward in making more EVs for more people out there. Now, with this progress, there's also coming new hardware, there's new technology that is coming. And in the past, in 1909, it was not a screen that people had inside their car. But today we have so much tech inside cars. And so it's getting important to understand is hardware 3 or hardware 4 that is supposed to come into the Cybertruck, which version is the better one. And I would like to go through some comments from Tesla Scope and a person who is actually working on this topic um, at Tesla who was actually saying the difference between hardware 3 and hardware 4 is not as big as maybe many people are promising or hoping for. Now it is clear that hardware 3 is capable of being confident with FSD and that is the key point here if you buy a Tesla right now could it be autonomous in three or four years with the hardware 3 it could be. It is only that hardware 4 is a bit more confident than hardware 3. But now there's the major difference that we had in the past. We had hardware 2.5 to, uh, to 3 and this difference between 2.5 and 3 was drastically as Tesla Scope is writing here. But the dis uh, impact of 3 to 4, it is a jump but it is not as impactful as the jump before. So if you order a Tesla right now, don't wait to buy a Tesla just because of this update because you can still drive this car in a few years autonomous as the progress of uh, FSD is going worldwide and not only for the US. And there was also a person working on this and he was actually sa saying hardware 2.5 and 3 is drastically more than hardware 3 to hardware 4. So there's the proof. Of course we all want to have the new tech but as you buy an iPhone, you buy an iPhone and a year later there might be some new stuff going on, new hardware, um, all kinds of capabilities with cameras etc where you say well I could have waited but there is no perfect time when you buy a Tesla. Now different topic is as well of course um, used car prices. I have just used the example from Germany now we can have different car prices all over the world. 
So many people are asking themselves, well, am I going to have a fair used price in two years when I resell my Tesla with hardware three? And that is what many, many people in Germany discuss right now. And that's why I just wanted to share this experience. So based on used car prices, I do expect them to decrease a bit in 2023. More cars are available now. The limitation is not anymore there. And Tesla is also moving forward. We have new information based on the earnings call that in Q2 2022, in the third month, 74% of the entire quarter was delivered to customers. In Q3, it was only 64. And in Q4, it was only 51. So you see the wave is flattening here. And that is very important. And if we look into Q1, we have first indications that many German customers are getting cars from Giga Berlin in Q1 in the first month. That is something that didn't happen in Q4 and Q3, where we as Germans were the last ones to receive them. And first there was X spot but now we have both at the same time so there will be no push in the last month of q1 and this is also because production increases more availability and you can push very hard into the market with current pricing and now if we look into germany we have the stock tesla stock currently at 158 euros that is up by 33.13 percent this year alone of course, Tesla decreased by a lot last year. We must um, fairly say that. And if you look one year back, we are still down. But again, it is in the right direction. We have a valuation of $556 billion. So I think twice as much is actually possible. That would be possible based on what we had in the past. Now, if we talk about demand in Europe, we have as well very good signs here from Denmark's largest leasing company, Nordania Leasing, that told reporters that they have signed as many Tesla company vehicle deals in the last week alone as they did in all of 2022 as a result of Tesla's recent price cuts. So again, guys, this is pretty interesting insane to be honest with you and Denmark has already already a lot of EVs out there um, further breaking news is that Elon Musk met with two top Biden administration officials on Friday in Washington so that is good news as well so it seems like they kind of have to work with Tesla together right now as they are so ahead of anybody in the US so the Biden administration has no way to um, just ignore them and work that around them now looking into Tesla Energy as the last, there is profit to be made in Q2, Q3 and Q4. The profits were not bad. So the net income increased even by over 50%. So um, that is a good sign, right direction. And I think 2023, and there are a lot of good Twitter accounts that are talking about this topic as well, believe that this will be the year of Tesla energy and there will be made some money. I tell you that the net income will increase. And this is a very good sign for the overall performance of the company Tesla. We see the impact, the impact on the income is still very small. We can expect that to increase um, over the next few quarters. So thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate your time. Um, I hope you enjoy my content. And if you feel like you would like to go in direct contact with me, link is in the description to my group. I would really appreciate the time with you. So thank you very much.